gosh, it's 1240. <laughs> Hi. What's going on? I'm a little late. Could be worse. <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm going to pull your PowerPoint up. I'm going to get this so it's here. How was your weekend, Greg? My weekend was great. Good. <laughs> How about yours? It was really good. It was really good. We were on the bike most of the time. So uh, we, yeah, we, we rode a lot this weekend. You had good weather then. Yeah, it was amazing. Okay, so hold on just one minute here. I'm going to share my screen. Looks like we're already recording. Um, hmm. That's not what I wanted to do. Give me just a minute. How are you feeling about today? You good? Pretty nervous. But, you know, it's all going to work out. It is all going to work out. I'll tell you, I did one this morning. Um, okay, so what I think I'm going to do, Greg, is I'm going to move this over to slideshow, and then I'm going to do from the beginning, and then we'll get rid of that. Right? So that looks a little bit better, correct? Yeah. Okay. I'll get that out of there. Um, <clears throat> so I have some comfort agreements that I will read, but otherwise the rest is yours. All right. I'll kind of introduce you. I will welcome, you know, just say, hey, welcome to Peer Apocalypse 2021. And uh and then, yeah, I just have a few comfort agreements. And then we decided on, um, I will manage the chat, correct? Yeah, you did. Yeah, whatever. And then, you know, I maybe after a couple slides, you can a I'll ask if there's any questions or if somebody has a question. And I think we, I think we visited this before, Raina, is that we'll, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll talk about those questions when those questions come up instead of waiting until the very end. Perfect. And then I will let you, I'm, I will ask you to change the slide, right? Is that what we agreed on? Yeah, just because I don't want to rush you, Greg. You might have some things to talk about a certain slide. And uh, did you get your box yet? Did you get your Peer Apocalypse box? Where, from where? From us. Well, they have mailed it to me? Yes. I have not you seen it. But you registered late, right? Yeah, I registered late. Well, yeah. I mean, I registered before the time, but I registered late. You, well, you'll How's get that? a, that's good. You'll get a, uh, you'll get a box and it'll have, well, so it'll have one of these amazing shirts and then it'll have your badge. Oh, cool. And then sometime, and they're kind of mixed up. So you might get uh, iron tribe, which is my husband. I told you about him. He donated some, um, little notebooks or you might okay. get glasses or a sticker uh, some color crayons. So text me when you I will let you know when I get them. Okay. And I'll, I can, you know, whenever, after we're done with this, we, I'll visit with you about, uh, joining your meeting on a Monday night, then we can figure yep. out a time and a, a thing like that. Um, perfect. And then I want before, and then when we've done, done with periods, I've got some stuff for you, your husband and your daughter, I will mail them to you. Really? Yes. It's nothing done. It, <laughs> Okay, no, I'm just, it's just I something like that I like to give out as uh, a gift. So you guys will let me know that when, you know, when we're done and said and done and Absolutely. moving on, we can definitely do that. Okay. All right. Well, we'll connect. Uh, we'll connect uh, after Peer Apocalypse for sure. Cool. Did you go to the keynote this morning? I did not. I got, I did. Yeah, I got. I was doing, I tried to practice this thing and I didn't register for anything. I didn't figure out how to, I couldn't figure out how to do it. Really? So, yeah. And it's just probably me not putting a lot of time and effort into it. I wonder, I probably, can you still register for 
Yeah. Questions? Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll look at that when I'm finished with this. Yeah, absolutely. Just go in and um, tomorrow I'm doing one at from 9 to 1030 uh, express voice in working with your psychiatrist. That's with Dan Fisher. And then I have one on May 5th value of peer support in the VA systems and social health from 1 to 230. Okay. So, yeah, that's where I'll be. There's a lot of good workshops. So we got one person in the waiting room. We're not gonna, we're not gonna um, enter anybody until one o'clock. Okay. Um, and then I we talked to you. I told you about the closed caption, right? So don't get don't get worried when you see live stream at the top of the screen. I'm not sharing your, and you want this recorded, correct? Yeah, we can record it. I think that'll be all right. Okay. Um, well, I, well, I, well, the people that are signed up or come to this thing, will they have, will I see them or are they going to just see me? So while we're sharing screen, you and me might be maybe one other, maybe two other box on it. But for the most part, all you're going to see is your screen. Now, okay. once you get done with your, uh, with your presentation and the PowerPoint, you can say, hey, Raina, let's bring everybody back. Close that PowerPoint up. I'll close it. And then people will just start uh, coming in, at, just like a Zoom meeting. OK, perfect. And, uh, and then, um, yeah, but we won't see while the presentation's up. You don't really see a lot of people, so. OK. I'm going to fix the restroom, Greg, really quick. Sounds good. I'm, that's a good idea. OK. Thanks. What do you think? Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Three people in the waiting room. All right. I am doing keto, so I have these keto dark chocolate sea salt nice i'll eat dark yeah i oh if i eat stuff like that it'll definitely be dark chocolate you know what i mean and i like dark chocolate anyways so it doesn't it's not like oh yeah you know, when i, when I started, first started going plant-based so i i wasn't a big vegetable you know i mean i really thought corn was a vegetable you know what i mean and and so it's not well, it is, but you know, it's sort of like, 
you know, I like corn and that was about it. And so I learned that, you know, I, I really just learned how to eat it. And then now I, you know, now I just eat it. So, but. I'm going to learn a lot today. I like vegetables. Well, you know, it's weird and it's sort of funny too, because I make sure I eat everything in my bowl or on my plate anymore. You know what I mean? Because I know that there isn't, you have to get everything. <laughs> yeah. Know, you know, it's like if you eat three quarters of a steak, you could leave the last piece and you know, you probably got your fill. Of, you know what I mean? And so I just sort of think about that. I'm going to go camping this weekend. So you are, I have a cabin on a river. I have a cabin on the Blackfoot river and, uh, but I'm getting all, all it's torn apart right now because we're doing all the electrical in it. So I'm going to take off for a couple of days and by the time you're going with some people. No, I'll just go by myself. I, nice. I need that. Um, I need that time to me. Yeah. I, I like, I, you know, it took a lot of years to finally like who I am. So now that I like who I am, it, it makes, it makes it a little bit easier to, so I couldn't go camping by myself, Greg. I don't know how to set up a tent. <laughs> it's, it's funny you said that because I just bought it. I, I had a really old tent and I bought a new tent this year. And I actually just put it up in the living room because I was, I wanted to figure out how to do it. Cause I, it, because there's, you know, it's that self-esteem, right? You don't want to get to a campsite and act like you don't know what you're doing. Like, right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So it's like, you know, it's, so yeah. I got, I, I've got it figured out. So. So you set it up in your living room. That's what I should do to practice that. But it was funny because I mean, it, I don't know. Maybe once or twice a year I'll go tent camping, and even before, you know, I don't do it very often, so I forget how to do it. You know what I mean? Right. So I have the direction. I always have the directions, and I, yeah. and it's really simple now. It's you know, it's four poles. It's, right. It's it's you know yeah. so. But Greg, I where are you from again? I grew up in Ohio. But you live where now? I live in um, Potomac, Montana. Montana. I knew my my other director was on her about you. And she was like, where does he live? And I'm like, oh, my gosh, he just told me on Friday. I can't remember. So I live about 30 miles east of Missoula, where the University okay. of Montana, where the University of Montana is. Yeah. Here, here, I'll show you what it looks like out my window. Hold on. Can you see that out there? All I can see is you. Oh, you got to go the other way. That's why, probably. Oh, my gosh. Yep. Can you see the mountain? Yes. <laughs> it's beautiful. So I have an unobstructed view of that. That's beautiful. That's probably 20 miles away. Really? Yeah. Wow. That mountain is probably at about, I don't know, it's probably 8,000. Wow. Yeah, we have 13 acres here. Um, we have neighbors, but we don't see any of them. Right. Yeah, I, I, yeah you know what I mean? Like, it, it. I mean, I know them, and I mean, I'm friends with them, but it's not like, it's not like you're coming home Monday from somewhere and, and you drive up their driveway to see what they're doing. Like, right. If somebody comes up my driveway, it's usually because they've been invited. <laughs> right, right. Very, very, very rare do you see somebody just show up, you know what I mean? And, have you ever lived in the city, Greg? I lived in Boston mm. um, for three years. And so, yeah, I mean, I lived, I have lived in a big city. Uh, it's sort of a funny story. Uh, my dad and I, who never, we never got along, but he, he so said, you're a small town kid. And I'm like, no, I'm not, you know, fuck you. You know, I'm a, I'm a big town kid. You know what I mean? And, you know, I ended up in a, you know, you know, I ended up in a really small town. So, mm -hmm. you know, he was, I think he might have knew what was up and what was not up, but yeah. Is he still alive? No, he died in October. Wow. Um, sort of a weird, yeah. Like went to the hospital and never got out of the hospital. Uh, this kidney, last October? Yeah. Kidney, his kidneys failed. He was a diabetic uh, and his kidneys failed. He just couldn't. Wow. Sorry to hear that. Thanks. Yeah. We went back in, uh, I went back and took care of that business and I stayed for a couple of weeks and I was just back in Ohio in March to 
give my brother and sister a break for my mom. My mom's uh, my mom's 84 now, 85, 84, I think. And she's on oxygen 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And so, right. and my dad had done everything for her. So, it, you know, I just go back. I'll go back once or twice a year now just to yeah. make sure. Still live by herself? Yeah, they, yeah, they live in a, she lives in a condo or a townhouse or something that they bought, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago, whatever. They moved out of their house to there. But she's talking about moving to a small one bedroom, you know, just a really small. Yeah. She, do, she doesn't use the upstairs. She doesn't use the basement. Um, just too big. It's too, yeah, there's no, yeah. So it's just, we'll see what happens. And my sister, my brother, my brother's a brain injury. And so uh, he helps, he, you know, he can do some basic stuff. And uh, my sister is an attorney. And so she, she handles all the fine. She helps with all the finance, all her stuff. You know what I mean? So, right. But I left Ohio 30 in 1988. So 33 years ago. And wow. never, never went back. Never went back. Is that where your mom lives? Yeah. I left in 80. Yeah, I left. I went to Boston in 88, lived in, in Boston to 91. Met a girl from Montana who was my first wife. And we came out, you know, it was just a good, it was, I was a mess. You know what I mean? I was running from the law. I right. was trying to stay sober. I was, you know, it was just, you know, it's, it's the same old story. You know what I mean? And so, uh, ended up getting out here and then yeah never left I remember coming out here to get married with my first wife and I was like I would never live in Montana like I never like it was so different like it's just so different from what I was so used to but I'm gonna pull up my I haven't married I don't really have a lot of family my family's passed away but you know mom dad grandma blah 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 um but I have a husband that has we I have an aunt Donna and we go to see her. She lives in, um, oh, I just typed in Aunt Donna on Facebook. That's not right. <laughs> Donna Whitaker. So she lives, where she lives? Where? So she lives in Montana. I was trying to figure out like if there was a little town, um, but we go there. We've went there the last, I mean, not last year because of COVID, uh, but we, we go to South Dakota and go to, you know, we do all the stuff. We stay in the KOA campground. My, my kids, when they were little or they would ride with Nana and Papa. Um, and then we would fly because they would make it a whole couple of weeks, you know? Right. Um, but we, and my husband was going to come down and go to Sturgis. Um, where's that at? South Dakota? No. Sturgis in South Dakota. Yeah. Yeah. So he just made the decision yesterday. He canceled his KOA thing and they're going to go actually someplace else. that's a little bit closer just because we have a bunch of recovery stuff going on, but um so when we go back to see Aunt Donna again, I'll have to find out where she lives. Sure. And I'll text you. Um, uh, because as a matter of fact, my mother-in-law and my father-in-law are going to be there next week. So they they're they taking a two-week vacation. So it's my my father-in-law's sister. So okay. Aunt Donna there. Um, but my anyway, we 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 go back there quite a bit. So I'll let you know. Yeah, do that. Where where she's at uh for sure okay well we have nine people in the waiting room and we have about two minutes all right so i'm gonna get my my full hosting script i'm gonna i was really hoping nobody showed up you stop it <laughs> serious you know, stop it all right, but I get sorry. it. It's nerve wracking. But you know what? We get to do this together. You get to speak from your heart, tell your truth. And there's no expectation on how long you got. So you've given me, you've made it pretty easy for me. I really, I, it, good. you may not know that, but I'm just telling you. It, so I, it's me, you made it. I was telling my wife, I said, if it was out without her, I would have bailed. <laughs> oh, that makes me feel good. I'm glad. I'm glad. You know that, so well, right. it's just breathe truth and, you know, light into the situation. Like it's, there's, uh, and, and acknowledge the fact it is scary. It is nerve wracking, like, and especially virtually because you don't have even that distance where people you don't feel are looking right at your face. Well, you feel the room, right? When you're talking, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? You can look at somebody and you, you, you know what I mean? And this, it's just like, you're, 
It is what it is. Well, you're going to not have to, you're going to have, you're going to be in your own little space. You're going to see your power. You get to just get in your groove and find your, you, you know, you're passionate about, it's going to be amazing. So I have no doubt. Uh, and then, yep, you just tell me when you want next slide. I'll manage the chat and we're going to get this show on the road. All right. Thanks, Rana. Absolutely. We got about 19 people in the waiting room. Wow. <clears throat> And I'll probably give it uh, till about 103. I'll let people kind of come in. Okay. Are you comfortable with that? You want to go to 105 just yep. to, if people are coming back from lunch or whatever yep. they're doing? Yep. That's fine with me. And you can let them, I don't know if you let them know that or however. Yep, uh, I will. Yep. That's a good idea. That takes care of five minutes. There's five minutes. <laughs> and I'll take up five. Okay, 23 people. You ready? Are you, yeah, so you, so what are we, are we ready to go? I'm going to let them in. Okay, let them in then. Yep. Hi, y'all. Thanks for joining us. We're just going to give everybody a couple of minutes to, to pop on. Thank you for joining us today. Nice, the room's filling up. Okay, you guys, well, before we get started, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Raina Bauer, and I'm gonna be the virtual host for Greg's presentation today. Thank you for coming to this workshop, uh, Peerpocalypse 2021. Um, so just a few housekeeping rules before we get started. I just want everybody to know that this workshop will be recorded. Um, if you would rather be incognito, please turn off your camera and change your name or remove your name. We, uh, this doesn't apply to this workshop. Uh, we're not doing breakout rooms. Um, so I won't talk about that. Well, I will just say breakout rooms are not recorded. So everybody's aware as we move to the conference in the next couple of days. Um, you guys may notice that at the top of the screen, there's a red button that says uh, live on Zoom with rev.com. This is our amazing live closed captioning service that we're offering this year. And it does not mean that we are live streaming video anywhere publicly. Um, met some more people here. We're all here. <sighs> Mm -hmm. No, there's a lot of people here. I'm gonna <laughs> Isn't admit. that great? Yes, I'm going to admit four more. Okay. Um, and so for the conference, uh, for the comfort agreements for the conference, we ask that participants um, please honor the conference comfort agreements. And you can find them on page six of your conference program or listed on the Peerpocalypse website. Um, if at any time anybody feels like they need support, please visit our website at www.peerpocalypse.com for a list of the on-call peer support specialists throughout the conference. Um, and we will ask participants to keep themselves on mute. If you have questions or comments for the presenter, please use the chat box and I will be monitoring, monitoring the chat box for the presenter today. So that's all that I. Um, that's all that I have on my end. I would like to introduce our presenter today, uh, and I will turn the workshop over to Greg. Thanks, Raina. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Hey, good afternoon, and thanks for attending um, the workshop on uh, running nutrition and meditation. 
I appreciate you guys being here. It's a little weird doing it virtually, but I, I think we're getting used to it. Um, it'll be good to share some of my passions and thoughts on, on some of the stuff that I do. And I want to thank Rihanna for really uh, getting this together for me. I sort of have it easy. I, you know, I, I just to get to read off a PowerPoint, Rihanna had to do it all the hard work. So again, thanks everybody. I'm in uh, Potomac, Montana. If I'm about 30 miles east of Missoula, Montana, if you're familiar with that part of the state, um, the Northwest sort of, I guess. So uh, live up in the mountains and uh, looking forward to visiting with you guys today. So we can get started. Want to go to the first slide, Rena? Sorry, guys, give me just a minute. Okay, there you go, Greg. All right, we're gonna do, um, you know, run nutrition, how running meditation and nutrition and plant-based diet supports my, my recovery process. So this is gonna be a little bit that we'll be talking about today. If you guys have any questions, feel free to just throw them in the chat and we'll answer those questions when those questions come up. So you don't have to hold off till the end of the session if you have a question. All right, next slide, please. Greg, I do want to just throw a question at you. Um, Gary is asking if the slides will be available. We, we, if we can figure a way out of, if we can figure a way of doing that, yes, we'll make sure that we'll make sure the slides are available. Okay, and then it looks like uh, Delondo. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce that right, but I'm going to work on your. Uh, it looks like. Uh, you're only being able to directly message me and you're not seeing the other comments. So I'm going to go ahead and start, start sharing your PowerPoint, Greg, and I will look into that. So thank you for letting me know. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Okay, the agenda on, the, on uh, today's presentation is going to be who I am and who I'm not and why I'm talking to you today. And we're going to talk... It, the first talk, the first part we'll talk about is running, the what, the why, how, how I do it, and some of the resources that I use. Um, the meditation as well is going to be the what, the why, how I've done it, and how I do it, and resources that I use as well. And nutrition is going to be based on my plant-based uh, diet that I use. Again, the what, the why, how I did it, resources, and a little bit on um, starting new habits. So um, the next slide, please. Who I am or who am I? I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a son, a brother. I have, and as a father, I have two kids. I have a daughter that's 28 and she lives in New York City. And I have a son that's 27 that lives here in Missoula, Montana. My wife uh, is a retired professor at the University of Montana, and she's a behavior specialist that does education consultant um, throughout the state of Montana. I'm a son. I'm a brother. I'm a former small business owner. Love to fish. Um, I'm a runner. I'm also a twice convicted felon. Spent 14 years in the, um, under the guidance of uh, Montana Department of Corrections, some of that incarcerated. Uh, some of that on paper time. Also recovering alcoholic and addict sobriety date of October 2nd, 2016. 
I'll just throw this in. I was 10 years sober, went out for 16 years, came back in in October uh, 2nd of 2016. So um, also a state certified board, uh, peer mentor, um, have done peer support for really about the last 10 years uh, in my business that I owned. Um, I hired only guys that had come out that were coming out of prison. They would come and live with us. They'd go to work for me, and uh, we'd get them on their feet, and they would move out and you know, and get you know and move on. So that's what I did. And I'm also the president of the board of directors for the Montana Peer Network, which is a a recovery uh, organization with people with mental illness and substance abuse. Next slide, please. This is who I'm not. I'm not a nutritionist at all. I'm not an athletic trainer or a running coach, and I'm not a meditation teacher. Um, this presentation is just based on my personal experiences. Um, none of the following is considered medical or spiritual advice. So be before beginning your own journey or program, please consult a qualified individual. Um, I did, and it was and it was helpful to me. So I just want to have that as a side note that, you know, take what you can. I take the good out of what you get out of this, and leave the rest. So, next slide, please. Why I'm talking to you today is when I was closing my business, my counsel recommended that I needed to do something to replace the energy that I was putting into my business with something else or things would go bad. And at this time of me closing my business in 2016, um, I was still drinking, I was still using, I wasn't going to any, uh, I wasn't doing anything for recovery at that time. So we were trying to put together something that would help uh, take up the time of not working and also I'm trying to figure out of doing something with the, the, um, the recovery. At that time, I was not willing to be involved in any recovery organization in any shape, way, or form. I had an interest in running. I don't know why, but I just for some reason, running seemed uh, something to do. Here in Missoula or in this area, um, running is really, really big. We have, you know, we're surrounded by mountain ranges, we have a lot of trail, you know, mountains to run in and stuff like that. And so I had an interest in running and I read a book by Rich Roll and he's a ultra athlete, triathlete who does a plant-based diet and he was part of, and he was in recovery. And it, it intrigued me that if these guys could run a hundred miles, then that I would be able to run 13 miles or even one mile at that time. So I figured if they could do that, I could do it. And, you know, a lot of people ask me how I stay healthy. And when I tell them uh, that they're interested and they think they can't do it, they can, you can do it, you know? You know what I mean? If, you put, if we put our mind to it, we can do anything, I think, you know, a little bit at a time. And, you know, I looked at it, when I started to do this, I really put it as like an FGO and you can, you can decide what the F stands for, but um, a, a growth opportunity, you know what I mean? And, and I want, you know, it was something I wanted to do. So. That's how, uh, that's how this all started. And so if you go to the next slide, please. That's me running in the half marathon, finishing at the half marathon in Honolulu. What is running and what is it? I think for me, it was a way to develop and discipline and sobriety a way to develop discipline and sobriety when active in addiction, you know, addicts and alcoholics, I don't know, I'll just speak for myself. I had a lot of disregard for discipline and, uh, you know, developing discipline helped encourage the consistency and this consistency can carry into all aspects of my life. Um, when I think about running, running's probably the only thing that only that every human being can do, unless you're physically incapable you know if you, if you have something you know wrong with your legs and stuff like that but running is everybody can run some people can run really fast some people can run slow some people can run really far distances some people cannot run far distances but it's something that we all can do you know like you know in swimming you have to be taught how to do that you know and 
lifting weights, you have to be taught how to do that. Playing tennis and, you know, running, we started running when we were, when we were young, we just took off and did it. Right. So, you know, that's the one nice thing about running, you know, uh, all you need is a pair of shoes and a, and a pair and a pair of shorts and a shirt and you can go out and do it. You know, it's also a way to meet the CDC's recommendation of 150 uh, minutes a week of moderate to intense aerobic exercise. So that, that, that helps. Um, and we all have heard about the CDC lately, you know, that's sort of, it's in the news and, and things like that. And running's an, also a very effective way to relieve stress, you know, reduce anxiety, increase muscle mass and improve internal health. And I, I'll probably mention this a couple of times, but it really does, you know, my wife will say to me, having, you know, are you going to go run? You know what I mean? And it's almost that way of, you know, telling me I probably should go get back out there and do that. And it does really, really help. And a lot of these fasts can be found on the Center for Disease Control and Prevention website. So if you want to move to the next slide, please. So why I do it. So I like to feel good, you know, and I don't, and, and, and to feel good, you know, I, it doesn't really matter how I used to do it. And, you know, today, some of those options are all taken out, you know, with alcohol and drugs, gambling and other things. And uh, so it does make me feel good. You know, I get that runner's high that, we, that we'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, I like running with friends. Um, I've got a good running community here in Missoula. Um, I also like running by myself. I do most of my running is done in the mountains and on trails. I've done a few road races, but I really enjoy just being on the trails and being out in nature. Um, I've run over 20 competitive races in Montana, Washington, and Hawaii. It's probably a little bit more than that now. Um, so, you know, I, I've been really fortunate to be able to, um, to, 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 to be able to race competitively. I also sign up for races. The reason I like to sign up for races is it gives me a goal to shoot, to keep training. Cause I don't know about any of you, but once I, I it's easy for me to tell myself, no, I don't want to go out there today. Oh, it's going to hurt. And, uh, and this is the God's honest truth. When I'm running and I start a race, I literally those, that first mile, mile and a half, um, I really hope like my Achilles tendon blows or I break it, it'll blow a knee out. Cause I don't, I, I tell myself, I don't want to finish. This hurts. This is, it, it's hard. And so, you know, it's, uh, it's just the perseverance of it. And some of the main reasons for me to do this also is uh, the mental benefits, the emotional benefits, um, physical benefits, obviously, opportunities for the community and opportunities to be service. So the opportunities for community is I get to volunteer some of the races here in town um, as a race monitor and things like that. And we also have a running trail that runs up the side of the mountain near the University of Montana and 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 I'm part of the crew that we uh redo the trails on that so it get to be a service back to work on the trails that I get to run on so that's important for me to be able to do uh the next slide please some of the mental benefits of running are you know the runner's high I don't know if any if you've ever heard of that um it's an amazing feeling when you when it when you hit. It's the euphoric feeling produced in the brain during a high intensity exercise. You know, the it's funny to talk about the high. You know, when some of most of us are probably in recovery if we're at this conference, I'm assuming. Uh, but it is the high is created in that reward center of the brain due to the release of that the neurotransmitter of dopamine, and. Uh, you know, that's what we, you know, that's what I chased was that, you know, that reward center of feeling good when I was out there uh, using and today I get to do it through uh, better avenues. You know, dopamine is known really as the feel good neuro, uh, neurotransmitter. It's associated with the reward motivation, attention and motor movements. So that's sort of the same thing what happens when we use drugs, you know, we're looking for that that reward and the motivation. That's what keeps us out there and keeps, you know, shooting for that. So that it often stimulates the dopamine system, uh, making the drug use feel good. And uh, because of that pleasure, dopamine motivates us to repeat a specific behavior. And, you know, as I mentioned before, it's, 
just like running and drugs. You know, it's I, it, it, it's that keep searching. It's like dangling that carrot in front of you, and you just you know you never can get it, so you keep chasing it. And that's sort of where I'm at today with you know the 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 running that I use and some other workout stuff that I do as well. Um, so yeah, if you want to go to the next uh, slide, please. Some of the emotional benefits of running beyond that runner's high, you know, feel clear after running. The mind is cleared. It's I don't run with any music. Um, I'm not against running with people that run with music or books that they want to listen to. For me, I just like to stop the noise in my head and, and just get out there and run and, and, and clear that out. More even in temperament, um, it balances me out. You know, in recovery, we try to find balance in our lives and we, you know, and, and, and different things and running certainly does that for me. It reduces my anxiety and better sleep and better mood. And uh, again, I, you know, I, I keep referencing my wife to this, but she, she's the good, she's the barometer. She's the behavior specialist that, you know, understands all this and this stuff really, really, uh, it's worked. It's worked really, really well for me. And the better sleep I get, the better mood I'm in. So go on to the next slide, please. So some of the physical benefits of running are increased muscle tone. Uh, we decrease some fat. We increase heart health. Um, you know, heart, you know, no one dies of old age. We die from disease. And, you know, that's something that we think about, uh, you know, most deaths in the United States are preventable, you know, and, and are related, you know, and so I think I re read an article on CDC that says heart disease is the leading cause of death in the United States, and it's one out of four. And so running really does help with that. And, that, and I'll show that it sort of correlates with the nutrition part of this too. So, um, but yeah, you know, heart health is, has been important. When I first started running five years ago, I was on 40 milligrams of blood pressure medication. Um, no longer on any blood pressure medication. My blood pressure is uh, good. Um, from the right type of exercise and the right type of uh, nutrition, uh, it's because of that. I was also headed towards diabetes. My father is insulin bound. Um, and I was able to reverse that too with, with um, run, run the right exercise and eating. You know, decrease the level of depression, anxiety related symptoms, overall increase in fitness and risk of conditions like heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. And, you know, some of the rewards of it too is, um, the ability to be able to finish a race. I have two goals when I when I start when I start when, when I'm competitively running. I have two goals. One is always to finish the race. The other one is just beat somebody a little bit younger than I am. And I'm 58, so I try to if I can beat one person younger than I am and I can finish a race. That was just some of the goals. Um, also. Um, we had, I belong to a running club here in Missoula, and if you run 1,200 miles in a year or 2,000 miles in a year, you can you know you you get a you get a mug or a backpack or something like that. So, so that's some of the the rewards that I that you get from that. So that's pretty cool. And uh, so yeah, so if we can go to the next slide, please. So how I did this. Uh, that's a good question. Sometimes I ask why I did this, but I started out really slow. And I, what I'm going to go, go through right here, I also have a handout in one of the other slides. And it was, I'd walk a minute, jog a minute, and, and did that up to 20 minutes. And as I became more fit, I tried to decrease my walking and add more jogging. And so, you know, two minutes of jogging to one minute of walking. And so when I first started running, I hired this. I got this running coach and we went to a place here in Missoula and it was pretty steep. And I, uh, she was like, run up that hill. And I was like, I'm going to really show you what I can do. And I about died going up that hill. 
it was horrible. Like I, I really wanted to, like, I was trying to impress like, Oh, what a great athlete I am. And I really wasn't. And I was still at that point in my life smoking a lot of pot. And so it wasn't really the right mix, but I literally thought I was going to die. And so it, it, we went through the, you know, we went through this program to little bits at a time to be able to do that. Um, and, and, you know, today I belong to her gym and we do a lot of exercises with her. Um, I think one of the biggest things, you know, is invest in a really good pair of running shoes. Uh, that makes all the difference in the world. You know, any a pair of shorts not going to make a difference and a t-shirt's not going to make a difference, but the, the, the shoes definitely will. And, you know, go to your local running store and seek out, you know, an expert for a good shoe fit. It, it'll definitely make a difference between a positive and a negative running experience. It really, it, it really does. And, you know, if you're running on trails or you might need a different pair of shoes and if you're running on pavement, you may different, need a different pair of shoes. I, I keep a couple pair for that. And the shoes that I use, I probably put between 200 and 250 miles on a pair before I, before I get another pair in the, we have a local running shoe store here and then they'll take the old shoes as long as they're not all whole, have a lot of holes in them. And they, they, they give those back to people that don't have shoes. So it's nice to be able to do that. Um, I hired a running coach. She really helped me with the form accountability, motivation. She gave me insights about specific races that I should do. Um, I, I have in there, let me know if you need a reference. I've given this talk before in Montana. I don't, I mean, if you're in Montana, or I might be able to give you a reference if you're in, you know, but if you're in that Portland area or in that, in that area, there's a lot of running there. So there, you know, there's a lot of good stuff in that area. So that's a, you know, something to think about. And also, you know, I joined a local running group. It was called Run Wild Missoula. And it gave me a, a community of, like-minded individuals and provided opportunities for service as well as motivation um and especially during the winter so that i'm sort of fortunate in the winter i go to hawaii for the winter and uh so i can run when i'm over there and uh but it, they get to this group gets together all winter long and, and does you know running and stuff like that so really important as i was getting sober um find another group of people uh that that were like i said were like-minded and the running community is really really nice they're, they're very positive you, you know they net you're you know they never say oh you should be running you know you you finished last you shouldn't do this again it's been it's been a wonderful experience uh to be part of that group so we go to the next slide So this is, so I put, I think there's five videos and these are just basic uh, workouts uh, that I do, basic exercises that I, good beginning basic exercises for beginning runners. And I still do these exercises today, just with maybe with a little, maybe with weight and things like that. So we'll run through these real quick um, to see how they do. This is sort of new for us. Hi everyone, I'm here with Greg and we are. Can you guys hear that? We're gonna show you a quick runner's strength circuit that you can supplement your running with. This will help prevent injury and help you to become a stronger, faster, faster runner. The first exercise you're going to do, there are going to be five exercises. The first one you're going to do is a basic squat. This is to strengthen your quads, hamstrings, and glutes. So Greg is standing with his feet shoulder width apart. And when he squats down, he's going to go into a basic squat, keeping his weight in his heel. Okay, so Greg, go ahead and start. You're going to squat down, come up, tighten your glutes when you stand up. Okay, show him again. Drop down. Come up, tighten your glutes as you come up. You're going to do 20 of these slow and controlled. Remember to keep your weight in your heel.
Exercise number three is a lunge. Greg is going to step forward and step back on his right leg and then his left leg. Go ahead and go. He's making sure to keep his back foot straight. He's dropping to 90 degrees in both legs. His form looks awesome. You're going to do 20 of these. Okay, exercise number four is a side plank hold. Greg is keeping his elbow underneath his shoulder and he's lifting his hips. So he's working his oblique, which is a core muscle. He's keeping his shoulder to the ceiling. He's just hanging out here. And again, this is like plank. You want to start with a 15 second hold. Anything longer than that is gravy. And if you can get all the way to a minute per side, you're doing great. Okay? All right, exercise number five is a lateral lunge. So Greg is stepping straight out to the side, he's keeping his knee over his toe, and he's essentially locking out the leg that is not bending. So this is working his adductors, his glutes, and his hip strength. He's gonna do about 10 on one side and then 10 on the other. So with this circuit, you wanna go through these five exercises three to four times and preferably with a one mile or 10 minute warm up before you hit these exercises. But these five exercises done two to three times a week will greatly improve your running strength, it'll improve your fitness, and it will improve your, uh, it will lessen your likelihood of getting injured. So stick to it and you will see results. Let's answer, I think that one slide, we, we didn't get to see that thing number two. I think that might've been the question that came up. That's all right. Oh, but let me I go. Think the, see if you can go back to that after the squat, I think it was the plank. That one there. Sorry about that. Hmm. Exercise number two is a basic plank hold, and this is for core strength, balance, and stability work. So Greg is holding plank on his elbows. He is tightening his glutes. He is tucking his belly button to his spine. He's just hanging out here. And your goal is to start out with anywhere from 15 to 30 seconds. That is a great goal to start with, and your goal over the course of doing these exercises two to three times a week is to get to a minute where you can hold a minute without having to put your knees down and take a break. Hi, Hank. That's Hank, the shop dog. And he is checking on Greg's form. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Raina. Welcome. So that was the, so those exercises, as I went through, and the, the lady that was narrating that is uh, my running coach and also owns the, uh, the little gym that I, that I belong to. And um, I still do those exercises today. You know, we do those, I meet with them on Monday and Thursdays um, and we do the same things, you know, we, you know, and, and when I first started those, I couldn't hold a plank for, you know, six seconds, you know, today I can do up to almost two minutes. So, so we talked about so that that thing that those exercises you can see and if, um and then you know she said warm up with 10 minutes of cardio um you know if you're first starting this you know probably warming up with one mile may not be in the cards right so you know walk that you know you can walk that one mile uh run uh bike and, and things like that but it, the important part is to have 10 minutes of warm up for that and then you'll complete those two to four sets you know of 20 basic squats and as you get better in those squats and you can add weight to that, you know, you can add weight as you squat down like this, or, or you can have weights on both, um, and both your arms to go down, you know, the plank hold, um, as you said, you start out with what you can do. And this is, not if you can't do, I'm, I'm a really, I'm a believer in this. And I, I, I sort of preach this is five seconds is better than no seconds. Okay. So, 
if you only can do it for five seconds, that's okay. You know, your goal is to maybe get it to 10 seconds after a week and things like that. How do I, I want to say, you don't get discouraged if you can't do all these exercises all at one time or you get really tired and you have to take a break and things like that's okay. You know what I mean? So that's the important part. Um, the 20 alternating lunges, you know, is great. But that's something you build up to. That's what we, you know what I mean? So if you did four alternating lunges on each leg, or if one leg's stronger, you know, I have one leg that's stronger than the other leg. So I, you know, sometimes I work on that leg that's not as strong. I may do more on the leg that's not as strong. And the side planks and the lateral lunges. And, you know, like I said, these are, you know, exercises, you know, I, I, I you know, I'll go to the gym tonight and, the, and some of that, there's three or four runners in there that are, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty good runners and we still use these basic exercises as, as, as what we do. And, and so that's, um, that's important, you know, and as I've gotten older, I don't need to be bulked up. I just need to get a little bit, I need to keep some muscle tone. I mean, I, I, I don't care if the, what, what the shirt looks like on, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, walk around with big arms and stuff. I need to just stay strong. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind that, you know, just it's a, it's, it's start out small and you build up. So, uh, next slide, please. So this is the, this is the handout that I have for you. If you want to really start running like that. And, then, you know, the, uh, that first week is walk one minute, run one minute, you do that for 20 minutes. And you do that three times a week and it's a progressive thing. And if you feel yourself getting stronger in the middle, you can bump that up. And so you, you'll be able to have this if you want to add that to your, you know, you'd be able to uh, put a copy of this somewhere or be able to have this for you. Um, you know, and the thing is, you know, get up, you know, in the at week six is saying you run for 20 minutes and, you know, you run for 25 minutes and you run for 30 minutes. And uh, that's a pretty good deal, you know. If it, from starting out from one minute of running to be able to do 20 minutes five weeks later. And again, it's your own program. You're not rate, you know, this isn't, I need to, I'm trying to beat the person next to me. This is what, this is your own deal. And that, you know, you run that and you, and you do that, you know, and if you, if you choose to, you know, decide you want to run your first 5k, which is like 3.2 miles. And that's something you do. If you never ran a competitive race, it's okay. Uh, it, this is just good exercise. So yeah. Uh, the, where can I find the hand? So the hand, so the handouts we can, uh, I guess we, I don't know if you can get this off the, I don't know if they're going to be able to re replay this uh, presentation or if you need handouts, I'll make copies of handouts and, you know, get them, you can email me at the end. You'll have my email address. I, if you want to email me and you want a copy of these handouts, I will get those copies to you through email. So if that's something that we can do. Uh, Greg, do you want to give me your email and I'll put it in the chat right now? Yeah, it's Greg Arcello, just my name at gmail.com. Maybe put in the, when they put in the line, you know, put, put the handout on it. So I don't know, it, it doesn't go to junk or whatever. And I don't get it. Okay. Thank you. And we can come up with another six week plan if that's something that you really want to do. Okay. So this covers the first six weeks and that's something you guys want to do. And some of you get to that next point, say what's after six weeks, we'll put another plan together for you and get that to you as well. Okay, next. Perfect. And then Greg, somebody was asking if you had any information about running in Portland, the running groups in Portland. I don't know any running groups Lena. in Portland. I, I don't know any groups, but I know that Portland's got a huge running community. So it's probably, uh, I, you could probably Google, <laughs> running community you know running shops in portland you know so selena i'm sorry i can't help you on that one right now <laughs> okay uh, okay 
So some of the resources that I've used are the No Meat Athlete website. Um, uh, a great, it's a good resource for nutrition and running. Trail Runner Magazine I like. Um, I Run Far website. Um, 406 Running, and 406 is the area code of, of Montana. So I know a little bit about that. And Rhea Black's the owner of Mont uh, Momentum Gym. And she's been a big, you know, Rhea's my running coach. She's the one that did the narration of the exercises. Uh, she helps me and do some stuff like that. So, and she's really been a huge part of my recovery uh, to be able to uh, work with me to go through this. So there you go on that. All right, meditation. Um, you can go to the next uh, slide if you would. So meditation to me is power. Um, <laughs> I have to laugh at Celine. She says she has a good relationship with Google. Um, <laughs> meditation is a practice where an individual uses techniques such as mindfulness or focusing the mind on a particular object, thought or activity, you know, it's to train the attention and awareness and achieve a mentally clear and emotionally calm and stable state. Now, I'm ADD and ADHD, and so meditation, I mean, like how many, you know, how many ADD kids does it take to change a light bulb, you know? Hey, let's go ride bikes. Um, so I, if, if I can meditate, I think anybody can meditate. So, um, you know, I think one of the things about meditation is, uh, there's no wrong way to do it. It's your own practice. It's not somebody else's practice. It's your practice. So that's important. The next slide, please. Why I do it. Um, it helps manage this, my stress. And I should probably preface that with I'm retired and I don't have a lot of stress anymore. So, you know, meditation has helped with that. It can help the body recover from the effects of drugs and alcohol. Um, it reduces inflammation. It can help fight colds, viruses, and other infections. Uh, it creates a sense of well being by bringing oxygen to the brain. You know, we calm the mind, we calm the body. You know, deep breath will calm us down. Um, it can reduce pain by helping to create a more calm and internal environment in the brain. It helps me stay present, not to either to dwell on the past or the future. I can do, I can't do anything about either one of those two things. I can only be in the now. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I would I change the past? If I change the past then I probably wouldn't be talking with you guys today. So, you know, it's, it, it's better for me just to stay in the now. Staying present can help me learn about myself as well as connect with others. It creates that sense of inner peace. And for me, inner peace is really, really important. Um, as a recovering addict and alcoholic, I, there wasn't a lot of inner peace during that time, even though I thought that's what I was, that I was doing. I was trying to find that inner peace. So today I have that inner peace most of the time, not that I don't, you know, at times things happen, of course, but that sense of inner peace can be what addicts and alcoholics are looking for when I first turned to it. Like I just said, I think that's what I would, you know, I was looking for that, you know, that almighty thing, the utopia society, you know, when I was trying to use and, you know, today I get to find that work on that utopia, finding utopia through, you know, meditation and running and the right things to eat. And it helps to stop reacting and start responding. Um, that's important for me today, is how I react to things and, and then how I handle that. So, uh, yeah, you know, and I, I, I'm a really firm believer of calming the mind and calming the body. So, do you go to this? Uh, and I still have a landline where we live. We have we don't have the best uh, thing. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, 
how I did it, um, I connected with a group that was meditating in case it was, it was in case it was my home group in um, Hawaii. We did a, We had a Sunday night meeting. We called it 11 at seven. It was based on the 11th step of the, of a, the 12 step program. And it was at seven o'clock at night. So we'd start the meeting with 10 minutes of meditation. And another part of that too, was my sponsor over there. Uh, he meditates too. And we sort of have a running, uh, trying to outdo each other on how many days in a row that we've uh, meditated. So it becomes sort of a competition. Maybe it shouldn't be, but that's sort of how it ended up. I use, there's apps out there, um, Insight Timer, Simple Habits. Somebody had just put up a note that they use Insight Timer. I use Insight Timer as well. Um, today was day 885 days of, uh, of meditation. Um, cause it logs the days it keeps, and it keeps me focused. It, it keeps me accountable to it. I don't want to, it, it really helps with me, uh, to be able to do that for me. You know, I started at one minute per day. Now I can go to 20 minutes per day. I can probably go to 30 minutes if I really want to. And then I seek out a place where I can be comfortable, where you can be comfortable seated or lying down. You know, anything works. And I said this earlier about meditation. I, my belief is there's no wrong way to meditate. So I try to, so I find a comfortable place. I, 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 do, I meditate every morning, uh, roughly about the same time um, in the morning. Um, I sit in the same chair. My cat comes and sits with me every morning. It, 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 it's a routine. And, it's sort of funny because my wife travels a lot. So when she's home, she'll come up, you know, she'll come upstairs or whatever. And it's sort of that, oh no, like it's interrupting my time. But what I figured out with meditation is it's okay to do that. It's okay if I only get five minutes in today or if I only get one minute, it's taken that time um, to just to be able to do it. Um, you know, take a few deep breaths, close your eyes and relax your body as much as you can. And the, you know, as humans, we cannot, we can't shut the thoughts off. The thoughts always come. Um, it's what we do with those thoughts. And, you know, that's another subject, but it, so when you meditate, you're going to have those thoughts, you know, you're going to, some days are really, really good for me. Some days, like next thing I know, 20 minutes went by, 25 minutes went by. Some days when I'm meditating, I'm thinking, oh my God, how am I even going to do it? And I, you know, it's one minute but it's one minute that I at least had some of that inner peace. Um, you can choose a word or a phrase that has a special meaning, personal, spiritual, whatever it might work. Some of those you could use, maybe, you know, don't worry, be happy, you know, be happy, breathe the good in, breathe the bad out. Um, and it helps. And, you know, breathe through the nose, you know, it's breathing through your nose and exhaling, you know, for me, um, I'll exhale, you know, through my mouth and, and just try to get that all out, you know, take a good four or five second deep breath, you know, and just let that hold in and let it out. And, and, and you know, and it, it I, I'm really, I really noticed that my life has calmed down because of that. Um, and you keep that meditation going for as long as you possibly can. And like I said, it's almost like the, the working out of, uh, you know, you do it for 30 seconds. If you did it for five seconds, it's okay. You know, and you build that up. And but I, I, I just want to reiterate that we don't fail if we can only do it for five seconds or 30 seconds because you can't meditate for, you know, a half hour the first time you've done it. And so that's, you know, I like to just make sure that people know that, that when I first started doing this, it, it wasn't 20 minutes right off the bat. And even, to, like I said, even today, I don't get those 20 minutes. So anyways, you know, and that's important. It's, it's been an important part of my deal of, uh, in my recovery. So go to the next slide, please. Sorry, Greg, give me just a minute. I... It's okay. There you go. So uh, some of the resources I use is Lion's Roar magazine. It's sort of a Buddhist, pretty simple, good, good articles in it. Simple habit and insight timer. And the nice thing about insight timer is they have guided meditations. And as well as you can do a silent med. You know, I put, I don't, I don't use very many guided 
meditations. Most of the time I use guided meditation is if I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm having trouble going back to sleep, I'll put on one of their guided meditation, one of their sleep guided meditations. But most of the time I do just quiet meditation. So doing guided med, whatever is easier for you, or wherever people feel more comfortable, you know, that's uh, you can do it that way. So you can go to the next. Yeah, thank you. So nutrition. So about five years ago, I was trying to get sober. I was starting to run. Meditation was probably not, was still pretty much on the back burner. And I chose to go on a plant-based diet. Um, so this is where it all, this is what's, this is how it all started for me. So I've been on a plant-based diet basically for about five years now. Um, what is it? It's, it's a not eating, it's not eating processed foods or what we call the standard American diet. Um, the standard American diet says it's a modern dietary pattern that is generally characterized, characterized by high intakes of red meat, processed meat, prepackaged foods, butter, fried foods, high fat dairy products, eggs, refined grains, potatoes, corn, and high sugar drinks. Um, and I, you know, for a lot of years, I, I ate that diet. And, you know, and so, you know, I, I made a choice at that time. There are multiple interpret, excuse me, multiple interpretations of a healthy diet. Plant-based is not for everyone, okay? And there's a lot of really good ways to eat out there. And this is just my, this is, you know, as I, I think I said this at the beginning, this is just how, what has helped me. This, I'm not here to try to switch you over to being a vegan. Um, and I like to say plant-based diet versus vegan because vegan gets into a whole <laughs> different article. Michael Pollan says eat real food. And what he means is that food is unprocessed or does not come from a factory. Now, that I am totally under, and not too much and mostly plants. I understand all that, but a lot of the food I eat does come from, you know, if you got to, you know, even if you just get a jar of peanuts, that's nothing but just a peanut, it came from a factory, right? Unless you're growing them yourself. And so uh, it just doesn't, yeah, we have to be careful of how we do this or how I do this. I mean, I would love to eat a totally, for me, I don't eat anything with a face or a mother, okay? <laughs> so it, that takes away, you know, also known as a whole food, whole food plant-based diet. So anyways, uh, if we go to the next slide, please. So why I did it, um, or do it? Because the mind and body are connected. Nutrition can be the difference between maintenance and a relapse for me. And, that, and that's just keeping me healthy. I mean, you know, my, emotionally, mentally, physically is, is that. I don't think if I ate a steak today that I would worry that I was going to relapse um, with alcohol or drugs. And a healthy body is a healthy mind, and a healthy mind is a healthy body. Um, good nutrition uh, can help heal the body from negative effects of alcohol and drugs. And I had talked a little bit about that earlier. Uh, I, uh, I go to a homeopath or a naturopath. And I was able to, you know, sort of get off the, the drugs and stuff like that to, uh, you know, m monitor my blood pressure and things like that, do exercise and diet. It increases the blood flow to increase energy and decreases being lethargic. Uh, I believe that. I also don't, I try not to eat, I don't want to get into this debate, but uh, I try not to eat a lot of gluten either. I try not to eat a lot of uh, gluten products. Um, better weight control. I've been very fortunate with weight control. Weight has never been something I've had to worry about. Um, so, I, and I, it, but I feel healthier uh, by eating the way I do. And I've been eating, and I, let me go back a little bit. I've been doing it for so long now. It's hard to really tell you if I feel good. Do you know what I mean? I, cause I, I, I feel good pretty much all the time. Um, increased brain function and productivity. Yes, I think that's true. 
regular systems, regular systems of elimination. <laughs> um, that's important. <laughs> so to be able to eat right and uh, have the right way to eliminate. Better overall sense of health and happiness. Um, in sobriety, it's a good nutrition has been an example of overall, my overall choice and commitment that recovery takes. And in running, good nutrition helps decrease injury and increase recovery time, which allows for more training. And that's what I get to, that's what I see a lot is I can, I can run, I can run almost every day and not be, uh, and not be hurt, not be hurry. I shouldn't say, you know, there's times I'm, I'm a little bit sore in the morning and, you know, but I'm able to continue to do that. So that's, uh, if we want to move to the next slide, please. Mm -hmm. I do want to say there is some, uh, there has been some people from Portland that have dropped some stuff about running groups in the chat. If anybody's interested, please, please look that up. Thank you, Dorothy. And uh, oh, I don't remember who else. Uh, Jeff, thank you for that. Okay, let me go down here. Um, how I did it, and I, 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 I've talked about this a little bit earlier. I was pre-diabetic and on 40 milligrams of high blood pressure medication. Uh, my energy levels were low and I felt like shit. Um, I was always just feeling down. Like I, I, kept, I always felt like I was had a, the flu or something. I always just was always just not feeling right. And so I, you know, I've been able to sort of turn that around. So I just decided to eat better and I wanted to try a plant-based uh, diet. So not eat, and not eating meat had appealed to me. So prior to going to this, I had pretty much cut out red meat anyways. I was eating chicken and some fish and some seafood and things like that. So it wasn't, for me, it wasn't a, a really, really big deal. And I, I think I referenced this earlier. I had read a book called Finding Ultra by Rich Roll um, about how his success with running and a plant-based diet, this diet um, was inspiring and it all started there. And I went all in and I'm really fortunate too, because my wife eats the same way that I do. Um, and it makes it easier. To have that to, to be able to support that and support each other and make one meal versus if one's eating one way the other one's eating the other way if we have significant others or partners then you know you have to have two meals and sometimes that that that, that gets hard um but i will say this now i'm gonna i eat a plant-based diet i i'm really all for it but about once or twice a year i'll have a steak and I'll probably have lobster sometime. And uh, I'm okay. So how do I want, it doesn't affect me any in any negative way. It tastes really, really good. Um, I enjoy it. <laughs> um, I know that I'm not gonna die from it. I know that I can still say I eat a plant-based diet. And uh, um, but it's, it's sort of a treat. And if I've done it, a lot of times when it happens is if I've done a really big run and it just, my body's just depleted and uh, as when I normally, is when I'll do it. And so if, if you're thinking about going plant-based, I'll say sort of like I said about meditation, it's okay to treat yourself. I, you know what I mean? If, if, you, if you feel like you wanna have those meatballs or if you feel like you want you know, a, a hamburger from someplace, you know, I, I say go for it. Um, and don't beat yourself up if you don't, um, if you do it. <laughs> so, um, you know, another thing about eating the way that I do is, you know, when you're invited to people's houses that don't eat the way that you do. I always, most of the, now that I've been doing it for so long, people when we're invited to people's houses and stuff, but they know the way we eat and they'll, they accommodate that. And I also live in an area that's um, eating that way is not out, is not, you know, um, it's sort of normal, you know, a lot of menus have it today in Missoula. Um, and, and a lot of menus everywhere are starting to go that way. And, you know, I prepare a lot of my own food, you know, when I go, when I travel, you know, the first thing I'll do is I'll go to a grocery store, get, usually stay in a hotel room that I can get 
you know, I have a microwave at least and, and things like that, that I can go to the store, get my own food and, you know, and, and, and cook my own. I don't eat out very often. Um, you know, so when I go to, and even if I, you know, and, and I have no problem with, if I'm invited to somebody's house to uh, um, bring my own food and let them know that it's nothing against their food. It's just, you know, as long as they know. So um, that's some of the things that I do to do that. And I, and I think I do. I just went to the doctor on last Wednesday for all my blood work. So I'll know here in another week or so how, how everything is. So you can check back with me in a week, I guess, and I'll let you know how the plant-based diet is. You know, there's some, I take some supplements because as, on a plant-based diet, um, I don't get any B12. So I take a B12 supplement um, for that. And that's really about the, I mean, I take a few other supplements, but B12 was what um, I, I use a lot because of, I don't get that naturally through, and you get that through red meat. So yeah, if you wanna um, go to the next slide, please. So some of the references, and I think we talked about this is Rich Roll's pod, Rich Roll, he has a good podcast, um, the No Meat Ath Athlete website, Scott Jurek, um, amazing ultra runner. Um, the book, How Not to Die by Dr. Michael Greger. And if you haven't seen the documentary, Forks Over Knives, I recommend that you watch that. It's a good, it's good information. This is some plant-based sources of protein that comes from the No Meat Athlete. Just, we can figure out, get you a sheet of this. Um, but I eat, a, I mean, I eat a lot of that stuff that's on there. So we, we can get that to you if we can. So here's some cookbooks that I use. I, let me preface, let me rephrase that, that my wife uses that um, we cook. And so run fast. So I wrote down, let me see where I put that. So run fast, cook slow, cook fast, eat slow, and run fast, eat slow. Those are not plant-based. There, there, there are some plant-based uh, recipes in there, but you, there's also a lot of recipes that aren't in there. So I, I picked out a couple of them that are my, and the first one, run fast, cook fast, eat slow. There's a super food soup that's in that cookbook that's really, really good. Um, and then the other one, soba noodle salad with peanut sauce. <laughs> Did somebody just... I, somebody getting it through Rockstar I just saw or something like that. I just saw it pop up. I just didn't care. So like I said, those two books are not all plant, not totally plant-based. Then the next slide, I think we have, so we have Forks Over Knives and Chef Dell who wrote Forks Over Knives. Uh, both of those are all plant-based diets or plant-based recipes. And Forks Over Knives, my favorite recipe in that one, on that top one is braised red cabbage with beans and Jamaican black beans. And then the, the other book, Better Than Vegan, um, the Azuki Bean Tacos are one of my favorites out of, that, um, out of that book. And then if you go to the next slide, please, Rena. And then the How Not to Die Cookbook. My favorite meal out of that is the smoky black eyed peas and collard greens. Um, that How Not to Die book is uh, a reference book that Dr. Greger wrote about how we can reverse uh, some of the diseases that we have, diabetes, heart disease, some cancers, if we start eating the right way. Um, so yeah, and then the most, you know, and, and we think about when we talked about heart disease earlier, the most common type of heart disease is coronary artery disease, which just leads to a heart attack. And, you know, if we, if we can get a hold on that and start to reverse some of that, we might not have to, uh, we might not have to take all the, the Western, the, the, the pills that were, that were prescribed. So go ahead and if you want to go to, so starting a new habit, I, <laughs> sorry, sorry jennifer um starting a new habit you know and this is goes into everything uh remember your why and uh 
you know, define the goal, but keep it small enough to achieve on to achieve it and build on it. Define a time to do a new behavior, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, it was easy for me to find a lot of bad habits. Set yourself up for success, you know, eliminate, eliminate the foods that you don't want. Um, eat the ones that you want. Fill your house with the foods that you really like, you know. Uh, select your running outfit the night before. So, you know, gives you some uh, motivation to do it the next day. Pair your new activity, you know, with a already pleasant activity, you know, like if you're going running, uh, listen to your favorite music, pair eating with your, using a plate that you like, you know, eat with a healthy friend, you know, meditate in your favorite chair. You know, those are, you know, good ways to start getting into habits. Um, you know, and remember establishing a new habit takes at least 21 days, but can sometimes take over a hundred days to get a new habit. Um, so that was, a, you know, something that, that it's about the perseverance again is just stick with it. It may not be always easy, but until you, when you finally get into that role, then, then you can do it. Um, and breaking habit only takes three days to break. So, you know, if you eat what you plan, exercise or meditate, when you plan, find compassion for yourself and that's, and, and work to get back on that course right away. Right. If you did it, we're not bad people. We're not destined to, you know, die tomorrow. If we break away from not doing, you know, if we, if we've run for 18 days in a row, and we don't run on the 19th day. It's okay. It's okay to put rest in there for us. It's okay to take to rest. It's okay to treat ourselves to a, a, a small bowl of ice cream, if that's what you want to do and, you know, and, and, and get back on it. I, I'm, I just don't ever, my thing is don't beat yourself up if you don't do these things just exactly the way that they're laid out. But anyways, if you want to go to the next slide, please. So in conclusion, so we're at the end. I think there's going to be a few minutes that you guys will get out here early. Um, Running and meditation and nutrition are all important aspects of my recovery. Um, they complement the 12 step program that I actively participate in. Um, I'm a sponsee as well as a sponsor. <laughs> I'm a mentor and I'm a mentee. Um, you know, they all require discipline, which is helpful for staying sober and for living a productive and happy life. Um, that, like I said, it's really, you know, it, it's helped me. They enhance my life. They're just, they are not a substitute for addiction. You know what I mean? They are not, uh, um, and they all provide me with a sense of well-being, an opportunity to participate in a community, and an opportunity to provide service. Um, is I, I'm really fortunate that I got to try this and do this. Will I do this the rest of my life? I don't know that. I know that today I'll do it. I don't know what tomorrow means and, you know, will bring me into that. So um, I want to thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, it's the first time I've done this conference and uh, you guys were amazing. And if you have any questions, I'm, I'm here to answer them. If you want to email me for those, those workout sheets and those things, we'll get those to you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. You're welcome. It looks like I'm monitoring the chat. Um, it just like everybody is just there was such great conversation, Greg. And it, you know, if you're still on here, thank you for the interaction with everybody on this call. Um, Sounds like a lot of people are already doing it and, and you know, and then it's working for them. Um, a lot of recipes and things that they like. Greg, they, everybody really thanked you. I don't know if you can see it, but it was a great, it was a great presentation, a great workshop. And, and thank you for presenting at Peerpocalypse. You're welcome. Okay, I'll be in touch. I'm going to end the meeting if anybody doesn't have any questions. Okay. All right. Thanks, you guys. I'll, Rena, I'll be in touch with you. 
Absolutely. Thanks. Okay. Take care, you guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, Did a wonderful job. Yeah, thank you. Peace to everybody.